Listening to the Second Opinion Podcast. This podcast has been brought to you by Second Opinion Productions. Gaming is our passion, podcasting is our profession. Check us out at secondopinionpod.com. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Second Opinion Podcast. Episode number 126. My name is Celeb. I'm joined by my partners in crime, Toaster. What's up, Toaster? What is good? Nothing, man. Everything's Nothing. good, man. Well, everything's good, but, you know, today I had a relaxing day. I didn't do anything. I'm off for the next three days, so chillaxing. <laughs> do people um, still use chillaxing? Yes, in Texas. I do, at least. Maybe I'm the only person in this in the entire nation that uses it. Also joined by John C. Riley. What's up, John? What's up, everybody? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello there. How are you doing today? Oh, peachy keen. I'm like a leprechaun hiding coins all around Boston. Awesome. That would actually... <laughs> Greetings and salutations. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um... Hey, what's this little red and white Xbox One disc I have right here? I don't know. Maybe it? we should stick it in the Xbox and find out. Weird. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Maintain on topic, I, I, Toaster. I picked up Wolfenstein today. Oh, okay. Boo. Yeah. You'll like Boo. It. You will like it. I did not like that game, awesome even though game. I loved it at um, PAX East. I did not like that game. Well, that's why we're going to have to start a fund to get you a next-gen console. <laughs> please. <laughs> please help me. I'll it's take a Wii U. Jay makes the mistake about Skyrim all the time, and yeah. we still haven't duct taped his mouth shut. So, true. It's okay. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and get down into what have you been drinking? What have you been gaming, John? What have you been drinking? What have you been gaming, sir? I'm drinking Corona Light. Okay. And it's awesome. And I have been playing Super Smash Brothers. Project M. Oh, yeah. Yes. Dude, that's it's, no, it's, it's not Brawl. It's not Brawl. Because I'm on a huge kick for Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm putting together funds to save up money for a Wii U. So, um, yeah, so I can play Super Smash Brothers 4. I'm probably going to um, reserve Super Smash Brothers 4. The bundle pack with the, uh, with the converter and the, uh, the actual Smash um, GameCube controller. Before yeah. I actually get the Wii U, just so I know that I'll have it by Christmas or um, by New Year's Eve when it com- comes yeah. out. So. Yeah, it comes out on the 31st, doesn't it? It's it, Yeah, it's weird. So I, I don't know. Well, we'll, that's we'll... what's strange about it is that the 3DS version comes out uh, on, um, oh, when's it come out? Like November, I think? Yeah, but it's it's the 3DS. 3DS is great, but the thing is, you know, yeah. oh, of course, you'll have certain people, me being... You know, I love Twitch and all. I'm probably the biggest fan of Twitch uh, for the uh, Second Opinion crew. But it's like, yeah. yeah, you'll have it. But there's only few and far between people who are actually playing Super Smash Brothers on the yeah. 3DS. Because the thing is, uh, if you guys haven't checked it out already, please go to YouTube and go to um, and search for the Smash Brothers. It is a nine-part documentary. Each part is about half an hour, so it's about a four and a half hour documentary on the the greatest Smash Brother uh, Smash Brothers ever in the world and awesome. one of them is actually from boston called uh korean dj nice. but uh it's such a good they did such a really really good job at this documentary yeah. uh and it's probably um because i saw there's a lot of great gaming documentaries out there kind of like you know free to play and of course you know you have not so good ones like uh the uh good game or whatever the the one for um 
uh, evil geniuses, but oh yeah. yeah, by far the 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 movie the documentary that takes the cake is the Smash Brothers. It's probably the best documentary for video games I've ever seen. So I've been on a kick from there, and I just I I won myself a GameCube, so I got a GameCube and two controllers and Melee nice. coming to me. So I'm like, I cannot wait. I can just give my girlfriend back her <laughs> Wii, and I can just focus on that and just play to my heart's content. So awesome, dude! Awesome. All right, Toaster, what have you been drinking? What have you been gaming? Anything? He's Are been, you here? He Are fell you asleep because I was so boring. No, I'm here. I'm trying to find my Xbox One controller because it disappeared. Um, <laughs> I stole it. You <laughs> bastard! <laughs> Rosebud! <laughs> um. This is Joey. Why is he doing that weird dance, you asked? The hell? Because he Sorry about that. that. For some reason, I had these tabs <laughs> open up from GameSpot, and they just automatically started playing all at the same time. So I do apologize this about that. Joey. This is Joey. This is Joey. He's a douchebag. Yeah. Anyways, what have you been, <laughs> <laughs> what have you been gaming, Toaster? What have you been drinking? What have you been gaming? Um, well, I finished up Watch Dogs. How? So, uh, what did you think about it? Uh, Toaster's delayed response is coming. Okay. Um, I, it's a good game. But it's a good game, but there are some things. Well, it just the, the hype <laughs> machine really went into overtime on this Ooh, one. Ooh, man, it did. Yeah, and I was like, oh, it was a really cool concept. And, you know, according to Glenn Beck, I now know how to hack everything just by, you know, hitting the X button on a controller. Because, <laughs> um, you know, that's how it works. But, oh, yeah, yes. I mean, it was it was OK. Um I started playing uh, Saints Row the Third. Just yeah. Because. Uh, well, it was the free. Um, it was the f- games with gold freebie. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, also, Hitman Absolution. Awesome game. Uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that, and. Uh, um. And I downloaded the arcade Super Street Fighter, Uber Stein. Hadouken, <laughs> Farfig Nugent Edition, <laughs> Ultra Turbo Arcade Combo. Yeah, so it's pretty. That's a pretty good. And those were with games of gold, right? Yep. Most yeah. of those. Yeah. Yeah. And Saints Row the Third's kind of fun, but I mean, after just getting done playing Watch Dogs, I've had enough of. Hey, get out of your car. Yeah. So, understand that. Drinking wise. Drinking. Um. I was at a camping event all weekend, uh, and I was enjoying some ice cold Sierra Nevada torpedoes. Ah, uh, nice. Yes, in fact, I'm, I'm drinking one right now. <laughs> some good stuff, delicious. Bro. Yeah, and it's hot as shit here. I'm right there with you, bro. It's like fucking cloudy as hell here in Texas, but it's still like 90 degrees. Um. Okay, so I have. Uh, I'm drinking today. Uh, Wells Sticky Toffee Pudding Ale. Uh, it's actually a really nice beer. Uh, it's not too overflavored with like sweetness, but Wells always does great beers with their banana bread beer. They also make uh, Wells is the maker of Bombardier as well. So that sounds like diabetes in a bottle. It is actually. My leg uh, fell off probably about five minutes ago. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a really it's a really good beer. Um, and uh, what have I been gaming? I have been gaming a lot. And I mean a lot this week. I've been gaming the Destiny Alpha, which was amazing. Like, I cannot explain to, to people that haven't played it yet. I, I, like, I don't think this is a hype train. I don't think this is something that's going to be hyped <clears throat> up and it's going to be a letdown. This is probably, from what I've played... If that was how the game is fully going to function, probably one of the best games that Bungie has came out with since the original Halo. Because it's just, man, dude, it is so good. So good. The creation, the character creation, the exploration aspect, um, the graphics are, like, phenomenal. And the story that they have in there so far that they kind of leaked it to um, or let it let it off to uh it it was really really fun um i've also been playing the battlefield hardline beta 
and it's it's pretty good. It's a lot better than what I would expect from uh, like Visceral. I mean, I didn't. Visceral has always been an amazing company, but thinking of Visceral creating a, a first person shooter, um, especially set in the Battlefield series, was something I was a little worried about. But I'm not really worried about it anymore because it it was actually like ten times more fun than I had with Battlefield Four the entire time I had it. So. Uh, I've been playing that. Also, um, picked up UFC today for the PlayStation 4, and Bruce Lee kicks ass. Um, he is amazing in the game. I've uh, been playing some Dead Rising. Just now started that on the Xbox One because I finally picked up an Xbox One. I beat Rise Son of Rome, which was a, a, a way better game than what it was said to be. Uh, a little uh, disappointed in Titanfall. I can understand why Hip Hop Gamer had a big rant and rave about that game when it first came out because it is not the game that it was said to be. No ifs, ands, or buts. Total hype train on that. Uh, there's a lot of problems with the game, and I hate the fact that it's like 6v6. And most of the times when you're thinking you're getting actual kills, you're not getting kills. You're actually killing minions. So that's not, you're not actually killing pilots. You're killing minions. So they're like AI that are online and you don't even get all the points for them that you would by killing a pilot. So it's completely frustrating. Um, oh, what else have I been playing? Playing the shit out of Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Such a fun game. Like, <laughs> really, really awesome, fun game. Um, and I'm trying to prep myself. John saw this earlier. Uh, trying to prep myself for me and Dara's fifth annual game to you drop event that we're having this coming up Saturday. Uh, we do these little game to you drop things at our apartment, and a bunch of our friends come over and we drink and eat pizza uh, and play video games. So this time we're playing Mario Kart 8, and uh, it's going to be some good times. I'm really, really excited about it. So I really wish I was there in Texas to actually be there and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, get to know Texas, get to know the uh, the local gaming scene around your area. Yeah, dude. So, before you move like to gotta England, re- What'd you, you got to record some of that. You got to record some of that gameplay, especially Luigi's. I'm going to shit down your throat. Evil face? Yeah, dude. Like The death stare. Austin, uh, a friend of mine that works at, at Game Exchange here in town, um, he uh, he brought it up to me. He's like, dude, next time you do a game to drop, we need to do Mario Kart 8. And I was like, uh, I don't know. And he's like, dude, look at me. It is amazing. It's really fun. You can have four players split screen at once. And I was like, we'll do it then. So we're I'm trying to hype it up. I, I did a little trailer for it today. <laughs> yeah, it looked really good. And uh, like I posted this little trailer up and stuff to hype it up. So I'm I'm very excited about it. Um, they see me rolling. Yeah. <laughs> so like to get ready for it today. <laughs> so to hype, hype myself up for it today, I was in there on the arcade playing um, Mario Kart on the 64. Uh, just playing that, playing like some Diddy Kong racer because it was pretty much the same exact build. Um, all kinds of stuff. So uh, I have been having an awesome day just chilling and gaming and so on and so forth. Um, but we can go ahead and get down into video games coming soon. We got a good amount of stuff coming out. Uh, we got Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark coming out to PlayStation 4, Wii U, Xbox One, all the consoles, even 3DS. Um, Grid Autosport Black Editions coming out on the 24th. We also have Sniper Elite 3 coming out on July 1st. Um, Far Cry, no, that's already out. Uh, One Piece Ultimate World Record is coming out to the mm-hmm. PlayStation 3 and 3DS and PS Vita. What about the handheld? Anything coming out on handheld? What, for One Piece? No, 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 no. But I can also see that there's a bunch of different handhelds. I know that, uh, what do you call it, PS Vita, actually at the top of the list right here. For any oh, fighting yeah, game X-Blade. enthusiasts, uh, Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasm for the PS Vita is actually coming out on uh, the 24th of June. So is uh, X Blaze Code Embryo. So anybody, uh, good, some pretty good games. They got really big followings. Actually, yeah, Blaze Blue. So. You know, strangely enough, it's it's a really popular uh, fighting game. Uh, with it, it's kind of staying underneath the radar, but it has been featured at Evo. So, yeah. you know, go figure. So that's that's huge. Uh, when you know, when you have to think about it, 
it's on on the level more or less like Skullgirls. Yeah. Uh, because they have always like at Evo a Super Street Fighter Four. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, now they're gonna have Super Street Fighter Ultra. Um, mm-hmm. uh, of course, sometimes Injustice, always Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom, and then you got like you know um, your occasional maybe Smash Brothers, but of course Skullgirls and Blaze Blue. There's always a Blaze Blue yeah. competition going around. I will say that's one thing I'm really excited about when it comes down to Evo is seeing the new Smash Brothers played at it because oh, dude, dude, that's I the biggest wait. thing about Evo that I love watching while it's live is the fan reaction. Like it's so it's, it it's, just it's gets insane. you so pumped up, man. The the fact that they actually had demos of the game um, at a local Best Buy areas, and uh, I know somebody who was actually trying to check it out, and he said that. He, he was on an hour break and he's like, yeah, I probably could have stayed in a line for an hour and then, yeah. you know, had to go back. And But literally the line was probably three hours long. That's crazy. Just dude. to sit down and play a game. <laughs> That's a, crazy. When I say a game, I mean a game of Super Smash Brothers 4. <laughs> um, but then on the 15th of July, they got Saints Row 4 National Treasure Edition for twenty nine ninety nine. It's just got the DLC and some other stuff. How on many there. DLCs is it just one DLC? I think it's like three actually, but it's only twenty nine ninety nine. So mm. they have, um, I think they have like clothing packs and some other stuff that's going to be on there. Um, <gasps> oh sh! Oh ooh, ooh. I just had. Oh, it's a twenty. It's actually twenty. Uh, what is this? Twenty plus DLC packs included. Okay, uh, sorry, I had stopped the train. My okay. boner just popped right out of my pants. Not okay. to be disgusting, but <laughs> August 1st, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution. Coming out for all platforms, $49.99. Ah! Where's this at? Uh, all the way down. August 1st, 9-1. Holy crap, they finally have it. And you can pre-order it right now, ladies and gentlemen. Go get that game. I cannot wait to share that. I'm getting that for PS3. <laughs> I'm going to, like... Like, reserve it now? Holy crap. So what, is it just, like, the full fighting base? Is it going to be a story mode? Yes, yes, it's game? actually continuing because the thing is, the Naruto games, mm-hmm. um, for both systems, Xbox 360 and PS3, they stopped with uh, um, the Ultimate Ninja Storm 3, uh, mm-hmm. Full Burst, which was a continuation and pretty much, it, it's probably an all-encompassing, one of the best fighting games I've ever had because it's 3D yeah. environment circling around the whole entire thing, so it's not a 2D, it's oh, a yeah, 3D fighting thing. Gameplay, Plus, gameplay the storyline follows the manga and the anime pretty well. And uh, I think uh, Full Burst more or less will follow the manga more accurately, but when the yeah. original 3 came out, it it... it went out before the actual series ended. So they had to make up certain things and leave certain things out, but more or less it's following the exact same storyline and the animation and art is unbelievable. And you can get it both in the Japanese original language and the voice actors from America in there. And it's by far my favorite PS3 game of all, because it's just, it, it, it's insane. It's such a good game. And it was the first game that I did my first marathon on for like 10 hours. And I went in there and I beat a good majority of it. And it's so much fun. There's different things. Three on three, two on two, one on one, um, tank battles, pretty much when you're, um, people who are listening to this, if you're not familiar with it, I, I just, you know, you can either control large beasts, um, different tail beasts and everything. So there's certain yeah. things and you have to go the hero route or the legend route. And of course it's like easy or difficult and they make you choose certain things. One are easier, some are not easier. It all depends on points and the dynamics change as you progress down the game. So yeah, that's okay. all I'm going to say about that. But yeah, I'm really excited about that. Finally to have a release date. <laughs> oh man. Um, all right. So we'll go ahead and move on from there. Uh, Extra Life is coming up soon on October 25th. We'll be doing a lot of uh, live streaming uh, here on the team. I will actually be doing my live streaming um, earlier in August uh, because my I found out that my brother's wedding is on October 25th. So I'll be raising up to, I think I got $2,500 that I'm trying to raise up to. So um, uh, we uh, are about to get down into a music minute. And once we get back from that, we'll be talking about E3 and much, much more. We'll be back right after this.
very much for playing my games Wahoo! and we are back that was a great song uh, it was a great song it's actually from tech industries the lost level brought to you by godlike gaming group or gaming music group i'll have the link in below uh of this song it's an amazing song make sure to check them out on facebook as well Did, i'll have the link that's on a, that. the song sounded familiar didn't you use that song in your promo I did. I did, actually, yes. Oh, okay. Um, That's where it was from. Yes, sir. Um, so let's talk about E3. E3 just happened, and I know that we're kind of a little late uh, on this uh, on this show. We usually have it out by Monday, but we have been crazy busy. And uh, what we want to talk about first is some of the new, uh, new titles that were announced uh, that are coming up, some of the new IPs um, that were announced at E3, and first off, we could talk about uh, Xbox with Moon Studios, Ori, and the Blind Forest. Did you guys see this game? No. Toaster, did you watch this? Uh, that was when they were doing the ID at Xbox uh, yes. section, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. What's the name called again? I it's called it Ori and the Blind Forest. Uh, and it looks pretty, uh, like, magical, uh, and it's, like, about this... Uh, you know, some ghostly creature and his friend. It's like a masked demon. Uh, so I don't know. It looks really awesome. And I'm glad that Xbox is getting into the aspect of like, you know, really pushing their um, their indie titles compared to what it was last year. That PlayStation came out and they were like, indie, indie, indie. <laughs> Do you know what this reminds me of? Uh, yeah, exactly. I just saw it. I was reading the article. It reminds me of Child of Light. Yeah, you know, and it has an art style kind of like that, too. Um, yeah, Bastion, and, kind, not Bastion, yeah. um, um, Braid, Braid kind of braid, Child braid, of Light yeah, thing. Yeah. So. Real bright, yes. kind of vibrant colors. Beautiful so. colors, yeah, beautiful art as well, too. So, yeah. um, Next up on the indie scene, we have Play Dead Studios Inside. The team from Limbo is actually creating this game, and it kind of looks really sim similar to Limbo. Uh, you play as a boy going through these certain levels and stuff. And there was a lot of people that were like, is this like a Limbo sequel? What's going on with this? But I don't think it's a Limbo sequel. I think it's just something that is, it's kind of themed around some of the same art styles. But I'm really excited about it, though. I think that uh, it's going to be awesome, obviously, because it's from uh, Play Dead. Are you excited about this, John? Yeah, it's... Did you play know. Limbo? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I really liked that game. And yeah. it was it, it was around the time, like, right where uh, you got to see a lot of, uh, I don't know, it's, well, how am I trying to say this? If I'm wrong, go ahead, email okay. me at jacedownshow at gmail.com. But it seems like, yeah, shameless plug. Um, but it just, it, it seemed like around the same time that Super Meat Boy and a lot of the other games were actually coming out. And they were like, yeah. you know, these big, like, these small kind of like indie games that were actually making big headway inside consoles itself. Yeah. So... Uh, it was a spooky, cute kind of game. I liked it's it a whole. It's kind of weird to see a kid get killed by a spider. Over yeah, there, yeah, so. it's it's <laughs> just bizarre. You know, I much rather see flying meat get uh, like you know, if it gets grinded, it's okay. But if a ch if a child and especially like that dark kind of depressing overtones, strangely yeah. enough, I liked it a lot more than Journey. So, yeah. all right. So, uh, Toaster, are you excited about this at all, or could you care less? I'm excited that you know. Xbox is showing some support for any developers, mm -hmm. but I, I need to get better with my indie game cred. 
You do, sir. You have you have a PC that you you PC game right? Like you have a PC that will run you, dude. Steam, brother. Hit Steam. Oh, I mean, I've been playing a few things on Steam, like you know, um, the Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. Oh yeah, is like second one's supposed to be coming out soon, isn't it? I have it. Um, Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, it's like Diablo three on math. (laughs) (laughs) Holy crap! I'm not Uh. joking. Like. The amount of enemies that come at you, you're just like, seriously? <laughs> like, I can only shoot and swing my sword so fucking fast. I'm getting carpal tunnel. So it's like what full on horde mode with no backup. Oh, at least like, I haven't really gotten a chance to sit down and play Incredible Van Helsing 2 yet. But at least the first one, like when they finally released a patch that allowed you to use an Xbox controller with it, I was like, thank God. <laughs> And then I still was just like, why are there so many? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It's very challenging. It's not like, you know, Diablo 3 is a lot of fun too, but Crusader is like easy mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like playing yeah. the Crusader with the Templar by your side is like, why don't we just go and drive M1 Abrams into hell? <laughs> that's what we're doing. We could do that. We could do that. So, Together. but like, yeah. So I mean I and um beat our beat buddy is another indie title that I've I've been playing off and on which is a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so but awesome. my indie my indie cred is very low. <laughs> we'll get it up over the over the year or so. Since I have a an Xbox now, you and me will have to play some co op indie games. We'll find some that'll come out. Um, also, a long overdue game that came, that was announced at the Microsoft press conference. Phantom Dust is coming back. It's making its triumphant return to the Xbox console. It's not really a new IP, but one thing I will say that was awesome about the trailer that they showed off in the background, whenever it first shows uh, the main character sitting down at the bench, if you look to your right, there is actually a really big poster board that has Gears of War on the poster board. Uh, it's got a, uh, I don't know if it's like a shout out to Gears of War, if it's like, hey, that's coming soon. But, well, you uh, remember at the end of Xbox's press conference, yeah, they, they flashed they showed the Gears the logo. logo, you know, which Jay was just like, what he the? He was pissed. He's like, what the fuck? What the shit, man? <laughs> it's, he's like, it, it's awful. Like, he doesn't really Looking sound gear. like that, listeners. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, he does sound like that, actually. It sounds, that's how he sounds in my head. Um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm excited about it. I only played Phantom Dust just for a little bit. I could, I didn't really get into it. But uh, I think what they're doing is they're basically just kind of refreshing the the series and bringing it back. Uh, and they'll start. It kind of looks like a mythological kind of game of like, in the sense of like using magic against your enemies and all this other stuff. So we'll see. We'll see how it comes down. You know, I have uh, something completely off topic, but okay. yeah, I need to get it off my chest. I'm done doing midnight releases. Uh, we were just talking about that yeah. uh, while the song was playing, um, like uh, off air, as you could say, off air. Um, <clears throat> and how the fact that the the Smash Brothers is coming out on uh, New Year's Eve, and I'm like, do you really think people are gonna wait in line? Like, I would love to see. Like well, I would my, love to see you guys in the same room while I'm trying to explain to my girlfriend. No, 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 no ball drop. We're going to sit in line and wait for smash brothers. And I'm like, do you really <laughs> think that's a big idea? Because that's probably the only game that I would probably stand in line for now, but it's like, mm, you got my heart rock in a hard place. It's like maybe yeah. single. I would do it because you know, I, I've, I've done the whole new year's Eve thing, but yeah, midnight well, releases. I'm just, releases I'm just are saying like the fact, all right, I, I got Wolfenstein today. Yes. And I got home, I put it in, and it's got a 7 gig update right off the bat. Oh, yeah. This whole episode, I've just been watching the, the progress bar. Oh. Like, what's the point of getting a midnight release title anymore? If you just got to come home, sit, and then wait an hour for it to install. Oh, I agree with you, dude. I mean, I gotta bro, get up like, and go to work, man. Do you not remember what I was talking about with the Xbox? Like, I was tripping shit about the fucking Xbox One because of the install time. Like, holy crap. Like, Jason was trying to argue with me in the sense of, well, no, the PlayStation doesn't The PlayStation doesn't download the whole game. Yeah, it does, dude. Yes, it does. There's the a shit ton game. of... There's a shit ton of, of games that I've already got that 
the first thing they do is they do a 32 gigabyte install. Like there's there's at least five, four or five of them. There's and then like with my Xbox the other day, like I was so excited. I, I you know I set it all up. I'm trying to you know watch E3 and do it at the same time. What's this? I gotta fucking install every game and it's What's taking this? like 20 hours. Oh, dude, I was so fucking pissed it's off. Defeated. Man. It's like Killzone Shadows Fall when they had like 40 something gig just yeah. to play it. Yeah. Womp womp womp. Totally. I wonder how much uh, Grand Theft Auto Five is going to take up on your PS4 or Xbox One. Probably, gigs. yeah, probably, yeah, <laughs> probably, uh, yeah, probably somewhere around there. So, um, but uh, yeah, dude, you know, I agree with you. Uh, it's there's a lot of shit that you got to fucking download nowadays for some of this stuff, and I wish that there was a a quicker install base. The one thing that is positive about the PlayStation Four is that most of the times, like, if you want to play the game. And while it's installing, you could still play the regular game like single player mode and whatever else story mode by yourself while the game's installing. But you can't use any of the network features at all. Uh, but on the Xbox, you can't play the game until it's downloaded. And only like if it's 50 percent downloaded, you can click on the game. But most of the times you can't play it like I can only play Plants vs. Zombies on like offline mode in like this one <laughs> practice area while it was showing like an install thing like it was only let me play as certain characters was <laughs> it was the uh the the um super secret couch for couch fort level yeah yeah it was ridiculous man i was like holy shit this is taking forever but uh i agree with you man i agree with you 100 percent also what was announced at e3 on xbox uh, i'm going to kind of go through some of these so we can get down to, to some of the heavy hitting um, you know, titles. Scalebound was announced as an exclusive for the Xbox One by Platinum Games. It's kind of a weird looking mix between like Monster Hunters and and Devil May Cry. Like, I don't know. It's it's a crazy looking mix. Um, there's also um, Nintendo. Actually, like I was impressed by something that Nintendo announced Mario Maker for the Nintendo. It is a full-on Mario creator that you can actually build your levels. Uh, and, like, you know, they did one on stage, and it took, like, l less than 10 minutes to build a full level. And you can actually go back and forth between certain Marios. Like, you can do Super Mario, um, Mario Brothers 2, all different types of Marios, and actually uh, create your levels, extend, like, the tubes as far as you want, make it as difficult as possible, and then publish the game on the network. And that was, you know, I was actually really impressed with that. I think that's a really cool aspect that they added. Um, the one thing that I was kind of like, I don't know what to think about, Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. And uh, they showed off Captain Toad and, and uh, Super Mario Brothers uh, 3D World. Uh, you know, there were some submissions where you actually got to play as him. You were going around searching for treasures and stuff. But there, this game doesn't come out until 2015. I just don't really understand what they're going to do with this game. Like, it's a mini game, but, like, I don't I don't know why Nintendo releases games like this, Toaster. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't, it. like, I watched their, uh, their digital press conference, because that's what they yeah. called it. And first off, um, like we were talking about on the 16-bit show, yeah. how the hell did you get Robot Chicken to open for you? yeah. I agree, but they also got... You are uh, not that cool. Yeah, dude, they also got uh, a couple of weeks before that whenever they were talking about... Um, they were talking about E3 and pumping it up. Uh, John, who did Nintendo get to do their intro? <laughs> it's Super like, Mega... It's Mega 64. And Mega are you guys, are you guys talking shit about Nintendo? Swim, yeah. Talking shit about Nintendo behind we my back while I'm peeing? Yes. <laughs> I'm totally talking shit about Nintendo. Oh, shame on you. Wow. Even though they make some of the worst decisions known to man. All right. I have one title for you. Yeah. Yoshi's Woolly World. Hey, man, it pays the bills. <laughs> Otherwise, it pays the bills, man. You stick with what you know. They stuck happen. with what they know. Um, Yoshi's Big Planet. Uh, little Big Yoshi. Uh, I hope Sony well, see, doesn't. Can you name name me no, five no. Mario games? Now I hope Sony doesn't sue us. Um, 
Well, actually, with that title, it's being created by the same exact studio that created Kirby Yarn. And Kirby Yarn actually came out before Little Big Planet. So. I don't care. It's Nintendo. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, we, we could, we, uh, me and you could uh, banter back and forth. You know, I could talk shit about Xbox and you can talk shit about <laughs> Nintendo. I, I can say to, Skyrim I'm, I'm is a really, piece of shit. Uh, I'm really surprised that Watch Dogs is coming to the Wii U. I, I, like when I heard that, I was like, "Yeah, I don't know what? why they would pick up such a horrible game." Um, oh, oh my God! Okay, we got to move on before well, this no, turns to our... But there was one thing that I really did like about the Nintendo press conference. Yes, that? and that was the blurred screen that Miyamoto was sitting at. That was quite obviously Star Fox. Oh, if yeah. there is a reason that I'm going to go buy a Nintendo Wii U, For it's sure. going to be because of Star Fox. Yeah, but the thing is, here's the thing you got to think about. Even though, you know, I, I, I support them, you know, as, as a bipartisan person, like, you know, they don't make the greatest decisions. Oh, no, Twitch is boring. Why would anybody want to watch Twitch? And, you yeah. know, it's like, what is wrong with you? Really? <laughs> well, it's but, like, I mean, it just goes back to something that but, I said back when they announced the Wii U. Yeah. It's like. They don't understand that they ha they right now and with the level of of popularity that gaming is, all somebody has to do is come out with a console that allows the kids to play the games during the daytime, and when they're in bed, allows dad to play Call of Duty. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, true. but you know, you come out is, with that kind of console. I I, 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 I got to give it to him. I, I got to give it to so. Uh, uh, Nintendo, even though you know they are notorious for making bad decisions, and Reggie Phil's and me is just not, you know, in touch with a lot of things. I have to uh, give it to the. St they're sticking to their guns. They're sticking reality. to their guns. They're yeah, like they somebody. All. They're like somebody who makes an inappropriate statement on the news or whatever, and, and they don't, don't like, apologize I, I do. for it. Yeah. Or that they make something silly that you shouldn't apologize for it, and they don't do the stereotypical. I apologize sincerely. Oh, wholeheartedly because they know it's like, listen, he's like, that's us. That's us. Yeah. You know, we're going to make sometimes stereotypical bad games and bad decisions, but that's us. And they've never wavered. They've never catered to that. They're like Switzerland. They are completely separated from the whole Xbox PS genre. And I don't think they want to focus on Call of Duty games, even though some Call of Duty games have come out for Wii and Wii U. It's just, that's just not the place for it. It's almost like having... Like, uh, it, it, it's, it's almost like if Nintendo or Xbox one continued to start, uh, continue making those Xbox adventure games, they're probably not selling all that well. And I just don't see people doing those stupid little goofy gestures and jumping around in front of the Xbox one, especially since they removed the whole aspect of you not having the integrated camera on it. So, but it, it, it I, I don't know how to explain it because no, I, I understand what you're saying yeah. i mean and and most most gamers understand nintendo is sticking with their fan base plain and simple yeah they, they, they never move off of their fan they base. will never because the thing is if they do it. and it doesn't work out that will be the end of them and they'll be they'll end up like sega they 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 they, they, be, the they fall time, to the beat of their own drum to look at something that we're going to talk about later yeah where is this type of gaming going because later on we're going to be talking about some stuff going on with capcom right now Jeez. And, um, you know, and I feel that and this could happen to any company. That's the thing. It's not just in the fact of basing it off of Nintendo, because I, I tell you, it's going to be hard for me not to. Wow. It's going to be hard for me not to go out and get a uh, a Wii U because of Smash Bros. Because I, I, I love Smash Bros. I've already made the decision. That's my next console to buy. Because yeah. the thing is, it was PS4, and I love PS4, and I want to play games like Bloodborne so bad. But that can wait until 2015, until that game comes out. Because that's literally, that could be a game changer itself to uh, make, uh, I wouldn't say game changer. God, that's that's being presumptuous. But that is definitely going to give the leg up of having exclusivity for such a popular game. But it's also a particular niche for a game because not everybody loves Dark Souls or Demon Souls. Yeah. Not everybody it's, likes that. It's it's just weird. But we you there's just I, I just have faith that they're gonna they're they're gonna do something next year that's going to you know change it or make the, their own stuff. Case in point, remember when uh, I hate to keep glamming on this, but remember in the news when they turned down Skylanders, the exclusivity for Skylanders on Wii U? 
Oh yeah. Yeah, and w- what happened with the and you guys were talking about the Nintendo promos, their press conferences, and more or less during E3, not at E3, but they came out with this thing called the uh, uh, the uh, Wiimu, or uh, it was the uh, Amiibo. The Amiibo. Amiibo, where yeah. it's it's Amiibo Skylanders. Web, Amiibo Amiibo. It's, yeah, it's like literally Skylanders. Skylanders. It's, it's, it's a Nintendo, Nintendo version of yeah. Skylanders. They literally yeah. said, hmm, we don't want to pay you the rights because we feel we can do it better, yeah. so we're yeah. going to make our own. And why not incorporate that with Super Smash Bros. 4? So... I think it'll be. I think it'll be cool. We'll see how it goes. Um, but either way, um, moving on to the next, there was uh, another game um, announced called Splat. What is it? Splatoon. Splatoon. It's like a- <laughs> Splatoon. Splatoon. Whatever. <laughs> I don't but know. I'll make a, it up. Uh, be out in a minute, Mom. <laughs> it's a game, but it actually kind of reminded me of uh, John. What was the Nintendo title that came out? And it was Blob. Was it Blob? A boy in his go- blob. What was it? A boy in his blob. No, I think it was another one. It, it you were like this blob, and you were in a really colorful world, and then these black and white troops came through, and they made everything colorless, and you had to go through and like recolor the world. It only came out to like we. I think, but huh. it, this kind of reminded me of it. And it said that it's, this is like, shut up. <laughs> it said, it's going to make it like, they're going to push this for their core gamers. And it's going to kind of be, uh, you know, more themed around like plants. Uh, it's the blob. It's the blob. The blob. Yeah. The blob. It and, came uh, out in uh, 2008. Yeah. And they're going to have this and it's like, you know, I don't know. It, it looks, it looks kind of fun. It looks like a, it's, it'll be like a multiplayer game that you can play online and, and so on and so forth. So, and also I, I, the, the know, greatest thing is here's another thing that, uh, and I'll shut up about Wii U, but okay. the thing is you got to think about this. Wii U currently right now out of all the current gen consoles is the only one that's backwards compatible. Yeah, it is. It is. And you can mod it so you can play. Now, I don't recommend this because I don't. Second opinion does not condone this, but <laughs> to add emulators and add mods, because I know one particular person on his Wii U that has literally almost every game you could think of from every genre, from every console on his Wii U. And he has an external yeah. hard drive. And it's it's great to sit down and play Battletoads Double Dragon on the Wii U. It is really awesome. I agree with you, and that's the, that's actually the reason why I got that arcade system that I exactly. got. Which I know a lot of people don't have the the chance to get something like that, but I was able to get you know a custom built uh, Nami arcade that has yeah. But a lot of people can't afford eight hundred eight hundred dollars. Yeah, and that's the thing is that most of these like it was a complete steal for me. Like most of these things usually range around like two thousand, three thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, for a custom built one, and it was just a friend of mine. And he built it himself, and it looks like it extremely looks extremely professional. And he said, "I'll sell it to you for seven hundred. I said, "That's I gotta take that, dude." So stop, shut up, Jeremy. Oh my God, you and your freaking Wii U noise. And- <laughs> At least, at least he doesn't say what he used to say. He always just go wee 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 wee. wee. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. My, my voice won't let me. Um, um, so wee let's wee we'll wee go wee ahead and. <laughs> um, but I, hey, I was gonna say this, John. Uh, you know, in the long run, PlayStation will have a option for their gamers with PlayStation Now. And yeah, I but I've also heard PlayStation play- Now beta. Uh, yeah, but I let me ask to... you a question about this because I ha- I know somebody also has PlayStation Now beta. Uh, streaming, good, right? The streaming yeah. quality of the game, good, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Selection, bad. Yes. Yeah, but it's a it's a beta. <laughs> so far, so a... far, they need to yeah. add better games to it. So. Yeah, but they also like they have Dead Island Riptide on there. I played that. Ugh. I love the Dead Island series. It's 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 a good game. But that's yeah. like Tropico. That's like a. It's. it's I agree. It's, it's like agree. a. It's an iOS game at best. Yeah. No, I agree with you. But at the same time, like as of now, for a beta, for some, like being able to play these games for free, like I think it's a pretty good service. And if they do, uh, you know, launch it at a certain price, if they launch it at like nine ninety nine a month, it'll everybody will use it. No if ands or buts about it. But everybody will pay like. Fifty dollars or like you know sixty something bucks a year, um, extra 
from what they're already paying to, to do that, especially for the people that are saying they want back, backwards compatibility. Uh, also, PlayStation announced Entwined, which is a uh, new game. It, it's kind of like, it's weird. It's like you're these two dragons that, you know, it's a real colorful game and it's a two-player game and you fly through these different things and they're, from what they're saying, like these two spirit dragons are in love, but they can't be together until they get through these obstacles or whatever. And they actually launched it while at E3. And I think it's like nine bucks on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation Vita. Um, so, and it looks really good. Like I watched the trailer of it. I was going to purchase it, but I, I held off because I, uh, I got something else, which I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, they also announced Bloodborne, uh, yes. a game from software, from From Software. <laughs> Distributed uh, by and it's like Sony. the next gen dark souls yep created by and, um uh, that looks so disturbing it, it, it looks, looks really totally good well it doesn't creepy, look that dude. disturbing i don't know dude that from from even what dcd was saying while he was at e3 he said that bloodborne um it looks to be a lot more in the sense of like a kind of it has like the zombies in there really bloody and gory <laughs> no no game. they're not zombies cool. they're virus infected people Oh, are they, is that what they said? And they're from Varnum. Yeah. That's 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 the land where it is. Varnum oh, okay. or whatever it is. But has anybody uh, when you guys have seen like the little clips and stuff or pictures, has anybody picked up the vibe of the whole uh, Brotherhood of the Wolf? You remember that movie with uh, Vincent Cassell? Yeah, Louis and it was like, uh, he looks yeah. the way his his design is. It kind of looks like that. But that game looks fantastic, and you know yeah, I does. I have I think it'll be awesome. Dark Souls, Dark Souls two, and I have played Demon Souls a long time ago, but it's like, uh, it, it looks you know it looks really good, uh, and hopefully it's it's not going to be these one of these games. Hopefully they learn their lesson with Dark Souls, even though it's great to die over and over again. Just <laughs> it kind of gets tired. Yeah, it just it gets <laughs> like if somebody's just buying your game just so they can experience dying a lot, it's yeah. It's like, yeah. whatever, dude. People die a lot in games. whoop de doo <laughs> um, So I'm going to run through this list real quick, real, real fast, just kind of, uh, you know, talk about the games that were announced. And then I want to start talking about some of the games that we really didn't see much of. And then we'll talk about the gaming news, because I'm sure we don't want to stay on here for an extremely long amount of time. Um, but where is it at? Where did I just throw that link off to? Here it is. Um, okay, oh, so did, did Conquer's uh, announced for Project Spark, which I thought was yeah, pretty funny. Yes, Conquer was announced for Project Spark as a playable character. Um, Abuzu or Abzu, uh, which is the first game from Giant Squid. It's a uh, indie title, and it's about a diver that swims amongst like sharks and massive whales, so on and so forth. It looks kind of cool. It's something I'm not really down uh, for playing. Um, also from Grasshopper Studios. Let It Die was announced for the PlayStation 4, and it might be an exclusive, actually. Um, but it says something about if, you, if you've if you ever doubted the strangeness of Suda 55, um, be ready for this title. So this is supposed to be a pretty weird and creepy title. Um, Microsoft showed off Shape Up from Ubisoft Montreal. Uh, and I actually think this was like a really fun looking title uh, that's like an exercise title. Um, and it's probably one of the first more or less like uh, connect titles that I saw that I was actually like, you know, that actually looks really fun. Um, all the other ones that I've seen before have just kind of been like, OK, um, and <laughs> like, OK, <laughs> no, let's do it. <laughs> Halo Master Chief Edition got announced for the Xbox One. It's going to have all four Halo games. That's Destiny, completely right? Remastered, yes. <laughs> completely remastered in HD. Um, private servers. It's going to have the like Halo Two is going to have the original multiplayer on there, and you'll also get the Halo Five Guardians beta along with that. Uh, Crackdown Three got announced. Rise of the Tomb Raider was announced as well. That looks uh, pretty sweet. It looked amazing, and it's like a full-on um, sequel to the remake of Tomb Raider. Uh, Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris uh, was announced from Crystal Dynamic, and it'll be starring the kind of classic Lara Croft, but it's the over-the-top four-player action-adventure game, um, real cheap for like Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Nintendo showed off 
The Legend of Zelda for the with, Wii U. Uh, starring Zelda. With a, yeah, it's not starring a female like everybody was going around saying. <laughs> uh, it looks really awesome. Uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse was announced. Mario Party 10. And then also Star Fox was announced for the Wii U. Um, officially announced, but not too much was really shown off. Uh, Little Big Planet 3 was shown off for the PlayStation 4 by Sumo Digital. Uh, so it's still being somewhat worked on by Media Molecule, but it's done by a different studio this time around. You actually have four playable characters this time. Me and Dara are pretty excited about that. At the PlayStation conference, they also announced Dead Island 2. Uh, so Riptide wasn't really the second one. I guess it was just kind of a uh, you know player uh, kind of holding off until this one, but... Dead Island 2 was announced. Uh, Magicka 2 was announced for the PlayStation 4 and PC. Grim Fandango Remastered is coming to the PlayStation 4 and Vita. Like, I'm so excited about that. Did you ever play that, Toaster? No, I never did. It's an awesome game, dude. Awesome game. One of the first... Uh, I think it was actually one of the first games that uh, Double Fine Studios did. So uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 is uh, coming out to... Finally coming to PC... And then it's coming out to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in full remastered graphics. Um, Rainbow Six Siege was announced as well for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. It's actually taking the spot of Rainbow Six uh, Patriots, and it really looks good. It kind of has that feeling like it's they're trying to bring Rainbow Six back to the classic Rainbow Six. Um, now let's talk about things that we did not see and we expected to see more of. Now, some of these things we actually saw a few little clippets of, but I think everybody was kind of let down from them. So first off, The Last Guardian. There was a big fiasco before E3 stating that The Last Guardian was canceled, and that was posted out by IGN. Then Sony came out and officially stated it is not canceled. The game is still being worked on. So everybody thought, okay, well, we'll see something in E3. Nothing. Nothing was shown off at all. Also, deep down, was not shown off. Um, and that was disappointing. That was very disappointing, and I'm sure there was a reason for that, which is something we're going to talk about pretty soon. There was no announcements from Valve at all. Um, I was actually, I don't know about you guys, but I was really expecting um, them, like, you know, have a full on on stage, you know, show off of, um, of Evolve, and then kind of, like, show a trailer of, like, maybe Left 4 Dead 3, in the long run or something like that. But I guess I was just being too much of a gamer to kind of, you know, <laughs> think that was going to happen. Um, Gears of War was not shown off. Uh, there was a little bit of some logos kind of shown off in the trailers, uh, the end trailer, and then also in Phantom Dust. But there was no gameplay. There was no new game announced. But we know that they're working on one right now. So Halo 5 Guardians was not showed off. Uh, there was nothing showed off of Halo 5 Guardians. The only thing that we heard was at the beginning of the Master Chief Collector's Edition, there was a trailer that showed off, uh, you know, the, the one of the protagonists that will be featured in Halo 5 and also the Ridley Scott TV type of series that's coming out to Xbox. Um, and they're talking about how, you know, he's got to learn more about Master Chief's past before he finds him. And that's where they lead on to the Master Chief Collection. Mad Max and Just Cause 3, nothing at E3. All this buildup from Avalanche Studios and Square Enix of an un unannounced title. We didn't see a damn thing about this, not one thing. And I was actually like really pissed off about it because I was so ready for them, not even about Mad Max because they've showed enough of Mad Max in the past couple of you know months of like this new gameplay trailer and stuff. Um, I was really excited and waiting for a Just Cause 3 announcement, and there was nothing. Are you guys in the Just Cause? Did any of y'all play it at no. all? No. No. <laughs> that game does it. not There's look good. Gameplay, the game, like the audio was horrible, um, but uh, the, uh, the gameplay was phenomenal. Like, it was really fun, um, and I was just, I was expecting. I was expecting something, but I didn't get nothing. Uh, they also didn't show off uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 or Cyberpunk 20, uh, 2077, which cyber, Cyberpunk 2077 is 
Uh, it's been, you know, kind of, it was shown off a while back, but we still haven't heard anything of it. Uh, there was like one or two trailers for it, but that was it. It was kind of like, uh, oh, we're coming out with this game, and then that was it. So, okay, now the biggest upset for me, Star Wars Battlefront and Mirror's Edge 2. Oh, fuck them in their... Okay, so this is what it supposedly was, is that EA was not ready to show off full-on gameplay of Battlefront or Mirror's Edge 2. So they knew that if they went into E3 and they didn't show off any type of trailer at all for either of these games, that fans would have freaked out and been like, oh, blah, 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 you didn't show us this, you didn't show us that, whatever. This was pretty much the same thing. They showed a behind-the-scenes trailer for the Battlefront, and yes, they showed some awesome-looking graphics for the game. They showed some awesome-looking con- concept graphics for that game and Mirror's Edge 2. Did we oh. see any actual on-stage shit? No. Why don't we just add the you know Mass Effect reveal into that, too? Oh, God, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Like, they, oh, we're coming out with Mass Effect. You know, and th- th- what's funny is that while they were talking about Mass Effect, while Bioware was talking about that, they ended up like they stopped talking about it during the trailer that they were showing and they started talking about a completely different series. Like Bioware is also going to be coming out with another game outside of Mass Effect and we're working hard on it right now. Uh, we don't want to know about this other series. Well, we want to know about Mass Effect. Yeah, and that's excellent. Good for you guys. Now back to what everybody cares about. Yeah, what the fuck? Like, why did we not see any Mass Effect? Like, when did they announce Mass Effect 4? When did they say that was coming out? Last um, year? After Mass Effect 3 ended? Yeah. And they straight out said, Mass Effect 4 is coming out. Uh, and like it's going to be based the first on- person beat Mass Effect 3. They're like, all right, sequel. Yeah. But we've heard nothing at all about the game, seen nothing, and I was pretty upset. I was, I was really, really upset. So... Um, as of like a whole, the games that they showed off at E3, uh, they showed off Assassin's Creed Unity, um, and they did like full four player co-op and like, it was God, dude, it was so amazing. It was just, and then, and then the internet exploded. Yes. Why? Because you are not able to customize your assassin to be a woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And then... <laughs> so they made this When really- asked why they didn't do it, Ubisoft... I love how we're, we're pronouncing it Ubisoft. It's like Ubisoft. Come on now. Uh, it's Ubisoft. That's how everybody goes by. They say Ubisoft. You say French. tomato, I say it's pear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, uh, so, like, instead of you know, you know, I don't know, maybe talking to your PR person before talking, um, they decided to put some salt and pepper, a whole bunch of ketchup and mayonnaise on their foot, and stick it firmly in their mouth. Yeah, wasn't it like That's a sexy. really awkward interview? They were kind of like, no, it was like, oh. we, uh, didn't have the time. Yeah. Or, oh no, wait, the other one was. It's too hard. That, didn't, and that doesn't make any sense. No, Especially due to the fact like that one of the interviews was played like, as female assassins before. Yeah. One of the, the arguments, like they, they were like, it would have been double the work, double the voice acting, blah, blah, blah. Which I get. I understand that. You know, I, I, I understand the lack of a strong woman character in video games is an issue that needs to be discussed. It needs to be approached in a logical, you know, manner. And, but (laughs) I don't, this is like, this is like that gray area that you don't like being in because you can understand why people are upset. Yeah. And then you have to look at Ubisoft or Ubisoft, John, if you'd like, (laughs) and go, are you dumb? You yeah. do realize what you just said, right? Because because what's, the what's Assassin's Creed series yeah. actually has a really big following by but female. This is this is my argument about the whole how everybody got outraged about it. Yeah. We as gamers put such an emphasis on having a triple A title and a franchise that we love on a yearly basis that when we don't get it, 
we flip out and start making fun of the studio or start bashing it on Twitter or, you know, like the jokes that you and I have about Mass Effect, you know, or with Bethesda, how long it took them to, to patch Skyrim on the PlayStation 3. Oh, yeah. You know, That's if a studio that. takes too long to do something, we as a fan base flip our shit. Yeah. So uh, I can kind of see Ubisoft's point as well as the point of... I mean, what's the big deal? No women. Come on now. This isn't a fighting game on uh, with volleyball on the beach. All right. right. So that email address, ladies and gentlemen, is, is Jace Showdown. No, <laughs> Jace Down Show. Jace Down Show at gmail.com. No, but for real, like this is what I'm going to say. Uh, I just think I, like, I have always been one. I have always been one that's pushed for strong female protagonists. Tomb Raider is one of those games that whenever they relaunched it, they took it out of that aspect of having, you know, Laura Croft as this giant breasted female that wears short shorts all over the place with double double handed guns and took her back in the sense of like. She was, you know, a normal woman, didn't really know much about fighting other than what she was taught, and she had to survive through, like, everything. And that was, like, a really, really good game. And yeah. there's some people that see, I've talked like, to before that disagree with me on that. It but. goes back to that. Remember that art, the article I wrote um, and the big argument we got into? Not you and I personally, but um, yeah. we got into on Second Opinion. When everybody flipped out about the scene where she got captured. And it was like, potential. it was like, oh, it's a rape scene. There was no, no rape in the game. It at was all. an inappropriate touch. Yeah. Yeah. And she a little bit of strangling him, need him in the groin and then shot him in the face. Yeah. So please tell me what part of a weak damsel in distress you saw. <laughs> I didn't see any weak. No, no. That game was I saw a girl. The game that, was unbelievable. If I saw her do that shit. I would leave. My thing is, is like I think I understand, like like I said, I understand the lack of strong women characters, you know, and the the over, you know, objectification of them. I mean, look at Wonder Woman for Christ's sakes. You talk to anybody about Gal Gadot's, you know, casting of Wonder Woman, and ninety percent of the guys I'm friends with, the first thing they said are her boobs aren't big enough. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, it's true. <laughs> well, okay. Um, has nothing to do with what she has the you know ability to portray Diana correctly. Your uh, breasts, yeah. huh? Dude, yeah, her boobs aren't big enough. Okay, like I get it. I mean, there has to be discussion about that, and yeah. it's examples like that that prove that point. Yeah. But seriously, they've internet. done a lot of things for that game. They had a complete separate engine, a graphics engine just for her hair. All right, one thing. Yeah, a yeah. graphics engine for her hair. Um, I'm pretty sure they were focusing you and I, on... as PC gamers know, cooked NVIDIA cards. Exactly. <laughs> Just like all the like other when games they released the, When they released the remastered edition for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, a buddy of mine who's a big PC gamer, and he was like, dude, they got her hair right on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. I'm amazed. <laughs> it's true. It's I'm true. like, yeah. you're... Are, are you Vidal Sassoon in your spare time? I mean, you know, you're not looking at the landscape or the way you look at the ocean. Her hair. Okay. Cool. But nice. I just think, like, my, my argument with the, the Ubisoft, I'll say this and then we can move on. I understand being an activist and I understand standing up for things. But sometimes you need to pick what point you get on the horse and grab your lance in shiny armor. No, I agree. 100%. Because I think people lately are getting way too uptight about a lot of things. And it's misguided because it leads into like the shaming thing, culture that's going on. You know, at first it started with like pets. We we're like, oh, look, you know, you put a sign next to your dog because you ate your T bone because you left it out on the counter where your dog could get it because you're an idiot. But okay, well, pet shaming, that's cute. And then it like turned into fat shaming. And then it turned into skinny shaming. And then it turned into ginger shaming. And how do we get off the topic? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just all I'm saying is, is Let's bring it is back. We, we need to we need to calm down on the internet activism and just 
you know, really what you need to do is you need to apologize instead of freaking out every time a game developer does not make your 100% perfect ideal game. I agree. Um, and right. rent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> So, uh, also, PlayStation did announce uh, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, and it's supposed to be the final title uh, coming out for Uncharted uh, in the Uncharted series. Uh, so, Nathan Drake, retirement or... Yeah, they're saying... Yeah, Shot they're in the actually, face. <laughs> they're actually saying it's like he was in retirement for like four years or five years and something happens and he kind of is like, okay, I got to get back into it, so... Um, that, uh, also like he fable legends, Shia LaBeouf. yes, he does. He and they do, and, and they, sucks. they decide to do indie <laughs> films for the rest of their life instead of doing anything else. Um, they also showed off, uh, like Xbox showed off fable legends. It's like four player co-op. It looked pretty fun. Um, the super ultra dead rising three arcade remix hyper. Edition that looks so Alpha. good. <laughs> uh, it is available now. It makes me want to buy an Xbox one. <laughs> and uh, like you can actually play as your favorite Capcom characters. And at from the, the dead rising the, series, from the dead rising series. Um, no, but you can also like, you could dress up like Ryu. Uh, Guile, oh yeah. But they're still the same character. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they are. But uh, at the end, you actually face off against a giant uh, zombie bison. So cool. uh, it looks really cool, uh, and I'm just I'm waiting to play it until I get more into Dead Rising. Uh, Hy- Hyrule Warriors was also showed off um, for the Wii U. Bayonetta 2 was showed off, uh, and Super Smash Brothers. They had a lot of uh, Smash Brothers at the event. Actually, they had a full like tournament and everything. It, it was just it was a really awesome E3, um, and like we had already said before. You know, there was some stuff uh, that was showed off here and there that ha- had been announced previously. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't talk about. Mortal Kombat X was showed off at the yes. PlayStation conference. And, uh, well, Mortal Kombat 10. And uh, it looks phenomenal. It looks so amazing. The gameplay looks awesome. And we also found out that there is tons of new characters in the game. One of them is rumored to be Rorschach from the Watchmen series. Horsh- Rorschach. Uh, how, how do you pronounce Rorsch- that? Rorschach. Something Rorschach. Like that. Rorschach. Rorschach. But Rorschach. then also, Rorschach. there is a love child that you'll be able to play as. It is a love child between Johnny Cage and... Um, Sonya Blade. <laughs> Sonya Blade. And her name is Casey Cage. Casey Cage, yes. Oh, God. And, uh, is it a girl and, or a boy? Wait, did you say there was a... Wait, go back. Did you say there was a DC character in this? Yeah. Who again? Ro- Rorschach. Rorschach? It's Ro- Watchmen. Whatever. Watchmen. Wait, yeah. you wait. Oh. Oh. What? <laughs> oh. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. No, what? Hello? What's you going on? blow it! Why did I blow it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, what? you lose. Did I, did I screw up on saying something? Uh, no, I I can't find any article saying that Rorschach is in. No, that's what I'm saying. It's rumored. Good oh. day, sir. Never said they came out and said that it was like a for sure thing. Because it's honestly, just... like I I would I would buy the game for it just him. Yeah, they're they're saying it's it's rumored right now, but. Uh, a Reddit user actually compared his photo to the outline of a photo. And this guy no, has this no, hat no. on. It's literally like it shows in the video, him lining, lining it up and it's <clears throat> identical. Like there's no! so, saying there's a possibility it's going to come out. Um, but anyways, this showed that off and it looks really, really awesome. They also showed off Watch it. solid five phantom pain. Watch it become loud. Awesome. Well. Yeah. <laughs> He's just wearing a hat. He's like, ah. <laughs> I gotcha, bitches. Um, White PlayStation 4 Destiny Bundle will be arriving um, September 9th. Um, and a few other small things here and there. Uh, Ratchet and Clank uh, video game movie was announced as well. And uh, some official Sony TV shows will be coming to the PlayStation Network and free for PlayStation Plus users. So uh, real quick, we'll talk Can about... Can we the- talk about real quick about the PlayStation 4 and Arkham Knight? No. Yes, we can, actually. 
Uh, it was, I might it, have to buy a PlayStation 4 <laughs> because just, of that. Why? It's coming out multi-platform. Yeah, but you guys get like a whole hour of Scarecrow goodness. Yeah, and, and dude, Scarecrow looks sick as fuck. I mean, he looks oh, yeah. amazing. His jaw was actually sewn together with string, and then on like one half of it, the string it was ripped, and half of his jaw was kind of hanging down in the E3 trailer. I, <laughs> I was just blown away. I was like, holy crap, man. I mean, there was, uh, there was, you know, there was other stuff that they showed off, like the Order 1866. Like, I'm not too excited. The Witcher 3, it got pushed off, so I'm going to have to wait on that. Uh, Valiant Heart got... Uh, shown off and like a new weird criterion game got shown off to where it's like you could you could pl- like fly in a helicopter riding a jet ski it's really weird um, i was just uh, no man's sky no man's sky was shown off too and it looks really amazing you know what i really can i say something about no man's yes. sky i yes. really like the stuff that they're doing in their studio is great. And I feel bad for their studio last year when they had the huge flood and I literally halted production and development on this game. But I really hope this is not just um, <clears throat> hype. Yes, it looks good, but I, for some reason I have, a, I have fear. I have a fear that this game is not going to be, it's not going to look the way we've seen it in E3 or any past videos. It's going to be a whole lot different. And it's for some reason for me, it is really colorful, like a little too colorful for, for my taste. I guess. Yeah. I agree with you from what they showed off. Like it was real. like, it's one thing to be a vibrant game, but it was like really vibrant. Like everything was like super colorful. Yeah. Like it's like, I'm doing drugs. Like I felt like I was having an epileptic seizure whenever I was watching the trailer. Cause it was just, oh man, it was all up in my face. So yeah, I agree with you, John. Like I hope that it's not going to be one of those games that's going to be overly hyped. Yeah, um, it's it, it's like it's like that and Destiny. It's Destiny over-hyped. is not overhyped. I promise Come, you, dude. It looks like Halo too. It, it looks matter, like a cross. It looks no, like dude, if Halo. Dude, if you play the game, if you play <laughs> are you game, actually slapping your hands? I'm slapping my hands, dude. <laughs> dude, dude. If you I'm if serious, Halo dude, and I Borderlands just, had a child, that's no, dude, that's while Destiny. I was up there at GameStop just a while ago. I had the same exact talk with the GameStop store manager. He was like, all I've been hearing from, from three of my associates, Destiny's amazing, Destiny's amazing. I'm telling you, the game's going to come out, and I'm it's so, going to suck. I'm so I sick said, and tired of hearing about Destiny, to be honest with you. I'm so <laughs> sick and tired. The game, well, I've seen the gameplay. It looks like a Halo game. It lo- dude, literally looks like another Halo game. It's made by Bungie. It's made by Bungie. Why would it not look like a Halo uh, game? I'm sorry. I'm telling you, dude, it's going to be good. Maybe it's all that pent up aggression from a young child being like lit up constantly in Halo, just never winning. (laughs) You're like, fuck Bungie. The rest of my life. I understood because Dunny got into the the alpha and he was like, dude, you people like just random people can come in and help you on quests. Yeah, they can. Like I was playing the game and uh, I was on this mission by myself and I come up on this fallen tank and uh, like it's like this, it's like a, a, it's weird. It's like a, a animal or some type of mechanical organism Vegetable. or whatever that you're going against. And it's fucking destroying me, dude. Like, I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to do this about like by myself out of nowhere? Six people ride up on these fucking like jet bikes pop off and all of us together, like take this tank out. Like it was one of the most gratifying feelings I've had. Now, in can they kill you gaming in a while? Can they kill can you? Your friends? No, 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 no. But can they technically kill you? Controls get in there. No, no. Like there was, they, they might've just had it turned off, uh, in the game, but like there was no friendly killing at all. Like you mm. can just like go into someone else's. Someone's got to find a way around yeah. that. For um, you to play a so, game and a campaign and somebody just jumps in and starts helping you, oh, they yeah, could also yeah. hurt you yeah. or be really annoying. And that was the thing before that I was always against whenever it came down to like multiplayer co-op is somebody going into a game and just fucking around and shit while you're trying to do your stuff. But yeah, it's like Team every Fortress experience 2 trolls. that I had, every experience I had in the alpha of like, you know, coming up and helping someone or someone like helping me, it was always a great experience. Like it was just, it was a really good alpha. Um, but anyways, let's talk about these because it's starting it's starting to get late for you uh, on y'all's time and stuff like that. First off, I want to talk about Star Wars Seven. Star Wars Seven is supposed to be bringing back the Sith. Now this is actually a... it's 
bringing back the Jedi Hunters, which were Hang on, a... I'll get in, I'll get into that because this I'm was, sorry, I was I was going into nerd mode. I don't know. Actually, this was, uh, this was you're wrong. <laughs> this was There's... leaked supposedly. This was rumored and leaked by a Lucas Arts employee stating that it was going to be based around uh, there's going to be a lot of characters that are going to be from the Star Wars Rebels Disney saga that's coming out. Uh, that was kind of like the Clone of Wars. The, the, the Jedis are going to be hunting uh, or going to be hunted by the Jedi hunters. And from what they're saying, that the movie is going to base down to the Jedi hunters actually reviving the Sith. And yep. they'll be doing that at the end of episode seven and episode eight. Like it'll be full on fucking battle between the Jedi and the Sith. Like I am so stoked well, for this movie, man. Like this is my only question. It would okay. Disney saying that the extended universe <coughs> is no longer canon. Mm -hmm. And by extended universe, I mean the books yes. and everything. Mara Jade was never introduced in any of the movies. Yeah. But she's easily one of the most badass characters in the extended universe because yeah. she was essentially the Emperor's right hand. Yeah. And then she became Luke's wife. Yeah. So it's like... So they're saying, like, he's going to be hunting these guys for, like, 30 years now? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. And I wish they... I, to tell you, I really wish they wouldn't have done that. I wish they wouldn't have came out and said, everything else is just null and void. Like, what? I wish they would have just left it alone, dude. So... But in my mind, I don't care if they say it's null and void. It's still, it's still part of the universe to me. So, <laughs> it's still um, real to me, damn it! It's still real. Um, Capcom is now open for a buyout. Um, it is official that Capcom, uh, a third party, could take over the company. Um, and uh, Capcom announced today that it will not be renewing its takeover defense, and now uh, now is open to a buyout. Um, should a third party company want to buy Capcom stock? Nordic For Games real. is going to come out of nowhere. Yeah, they're like, you're ours. We've already taken over THQ. Did We're you like, hear what they did with THQ? Yes, dude. Like they they own the THQ. trademark, dude. And they're they're coming out from from what they're saying. Like they're, they're releasing to games back. under the THQ label. Yes, like that is awesome, dude. Like THQ is fully coming back. Like, I'm so excited about that. But there's a lot of people saying, too, that this could be really big, a really big deal for a third party company like Sony or Microsoft or even Nintendo could come out and say, we're going to buy Capcom. Because uh, if they did that, think about well, like if think Nintendo about Nintendo did that. That would be a return of the Mega Man license to Nintendo. Exactly, and that secondly, would be a return of uh, the um, Bionic Commando. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, Nintendo would have a huge heavy hitter whenever it comes down to exclu uh, exclusive games. They would have the full Street Fighter, uh, like it would it would completely be Nintendo's. Like that's the only place you would be Nintendo able. Nintendo would have to redesign their joystick if they were going to launch a Street Fighter game. Well, they you know that at E3 they actually announced they're coming out with a GameCube um, themed joystick like they you know they showed off the smash brothers gamecube style joystick that comes with the connector um for the wii u at e3 they actually showed off fully redesigned um wii u gamecube style controllers that like are themed around yeah, like but mario and they're all the same stuff. exact controller what do you mean as as hmm. yeah i know that but i'm saying like they're they're just new they're coming out for the system, yeah, but why and they're going to have it for full retail release. So I think if they, you know, if they're pushing this and they really, really try to push this whole aspect of like, you know, if they were to buy Capcom, like, dude, I'm telling you, it would be such a huge thing. But it would also be a huge thing for PlayStation or Microsoft. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. Man. I don't know. I think like if you're if you were going to say like one of the, the three console guys are going to buy it, I'd have to say Nintendo would probably be the better bet. Yeah, I can't see Microsoft, and I understand before I say this that the fighting community, fighting games are huge. But yeah. when it comes to an IP that is solely known for its fighting games, yeah. you know, at least in this generation of gaming, I think you'll see like Microsoft and PlayStation kind of go, uh, I don't know if I want to do that. Whereas yeah, Nintendo sure can go, well, wait a minute, we could land Street Fighter and, you know, uh, Darkstalkers or. 
you know, uh, I think it'd be in Nintendo's best bet. To definitely, Nintendo is. Oh. N- Nintendo already has those games, and even in 3DS form, Super Street Fighter Four and all that other stuff. Um, it's I just don't think they're they're going to develop because I just don't think that there's a pull for Nintendo fans to actually want to play that kind of stuff. And I just looked at the GameCube controller. It's the exact same thing. So I really don't think that those things no, are going to sell. Is. It is. If it's they wanted it's... branded and it looks like Smash, but if you can use your old GameCube controllers for with the adapter, then why buy a new one? Well, hang on real quick. Let me show you this. Yeah, send it in chat because the thing is, you know, if, if he, here's the thing. Here's the one that if, I'm if somebody about. is playing Melee or Project M religiously and they're playing it all the time, and then they come out with a new controller. Why would any person who plays it religiously want to switch that controller? Because they had to break it in and all that other stuff. Let's see. Um, uh, okay, I want to. Yeah. Hold on. See now, this one that they have, it's it's the GameCube style controllers for the Wii. They're saying it's uh, they they have three different ones that they showed off. Um, themed around Mario. Yeah. They have the Mario M, they have the Yoshi egg, and they, they also a pink have one. another Ooh. one that has the pink one. Um, and see, it looks like it looks like the GameCube controller, but there's just a slight, really small difference. What, what difference is to, that? You know, look at the, look at the I'm top I'm looking one. at both. Well, the, the, the there's thing a is, difference. It, the there's thing certain is, buttons like, that are like see-through. And, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's there's similarity, you know, and then like the where the joystick is and where the A button is, it doesn't go to that kind of, uh, um, you know, slender. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm not even design. gonna. <laughs> I'm. This is not my circus. These are not my monkeys. <laughs> All I'm saying I have is no idea what you're talking about right now. <laughs> okay, it, it's obviously there's a difference. I'm looking of course, straight at it. Of course. Like, but what I'm saying is. They're obviously trying to come out with these controllers because the pro controller for the Wii U sucked. It was. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I agree with that. And that was done by I think that was done by PDP. And uh, it was it was a horrible controller, probably one of the worst controllers I've ever played with. With them coming out with this, obviously, they're gearing it more towards the Smash Brothers fans. But what I'm saying with with them acquiring the Capcom, uh, you know, titles uh, with like you know, being able to come out with new Mega Man titles, especially with Mega Man being one of the biggest characters announced for Super Smash Bros. Yeah. Um, you know, if they came out with a, like, a brand new Mega Man title, that would be huge for them. Like, oh, I, would, I would literally, which I probably am going to get another Wii U just because of Smash Brothers. Um, uh, but, like, I would get a Wii U. If I didn't have one, I would get a Wii U just to play a new Mega Man game because I'm a huge <laughs> Mega Man The last, last new v- Mega Man game was a fan-made game for the 25th anniversary, and it was Street Fighter versus Mega Man Cross Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um, but then there was one last thing we're going to talk about. Xbox One GPU boosted uh, 10% without the Kinect. Uh, there was an interview hey. on IGN that stated uh, uh, they did a full interview with, um, oh, who was it? Uh, Bungie has already confirmed it, it's been able to improve how Destiny looks on the Xbox One without Connect. What? You know, yeah. guys, um, this, <sighs> this is a really interesting scientific fact. Cheetahs <laughs> are actually faster when they don't have a small person sitting on them. <laughs> Grass is green. Water is clear sometimes, but it looks blue and also green. It's, it's transparent. And, uh, I am not hungry after I ate. And, um, like, my girlfriend is not. Did. When Ken you turn Lob the handle out. on a door, it opens. Ken Lobb came out and said, uh, you know, he basically said that as well. He said, obviously, Yes, it's going to give it more GPU speed um, without the Kinect. Um, but you also won't have the abilities to to do some of the great aspects that we're having with this console. Xbox, I, turn on. You know, you know no, what? I can no, say as like, somebody you know, like, that didn't have as somebody that didn't have a Kinect with my Xbox 360, I don't care. Yeah. I don't use the Kinect. Yeah. There's there is there is seriously a division in Xbox console users. Between people that use the console and people that use the Kinect. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, 
it's not a huge deal that, that yeah. you know it's I mean, i'm not missing out anything on the aspect of <laughs> all i gotta say you know, is what i'm saying sorry uh, go ahead jeremy i, I didn't mean to I, I, no, i'm like all i'm saying is i'm not losing any of the enjoyment i'm getting from my xbox one because i don't use the connect yeah because there's a lot of people out there and, there are there's like a 40 percent to 50 percent of xbox users that use their connect and they talk about it all the time of like oh uh, xbox on xbox off xbox snap xbox record that I will say this though. Dude, the, the only thing... thing I say to my Xbox is Xbox on. Yeah. Or Xbox turn off. Yeah. The the one thing I will say that that Microsoft really has to work on and they're saying that it's supposed to be um, you know, fixed soon is the recording aspect without a connect. Oh my god, dude, it's ridiculous. Like I while I'm playing a game, I have to push the, the home button, go to snap, while I'm in Snap, I have to click uh, click on uh, you know game DVR. Then while I'm in game DVR, I have to click on start clip, and then click record. And then I have Dude, to push home and then click on the game again. All it is is them coming up with a codec for the USB port that allows you to pu- plug in a USB mic, so that their Xbox recognizes audio commands. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Most of the I problem agree. with the GPU usage came from the processing of the images the Kinect camera was using yeah. was getting. Yeah. Audio see, isn't a big deal. I think I actually came up with a really good idea. And I think that Microsoft really needs to look into doing it because I think it would be really awesome for them. I've been using the shit out of Xbox One Glass. Um, like it, their, their uh, secondary app for the console, uh, Smart Glass, is, is amazing. Like it, it's really well put together. Um, the one great thing about it is that you could go on like while you're wherever, go straight to your game DVR and show your friends like, hey, you know, I was playing Rise earlier and this is what was happening in it. Like I was showing a friend of mine that doesn't have an Xbox full Rise HD gameplay from my phone straight from their app. Um, one thing though is that you can directly connect. Um, you could directly connect to your Xbox console, just like you can with the PlayStation 4 app. One of the awesome things about it, though, is that while you're in there, you can go into the game DVR section, and it gives you the control to, like, play on your TV, play on your Xbox, whatever else, play those certain clips wherever you want to. One thing I came up with, why don't they add in an aspect to the game DVR to where you can actually just push a record button? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. from that app, record your gameplay. Have a full, uh, you know, connective app aspect so you can just be, you know, push record and it starts recording it. Like, it blew my mind whenever I even came up with the idea. Like, that would be awesome. And if, like, if PlayStation could even do it with theirs, I would be blown away by it because playstation share factor is so easy like if you were to record gameplay from your playstation 4 you just double tap the share button it starts recording and it records for 15 minutes straight and once it's done recording it automatically stops and saves um and i'm telling you if xbox came out with a really easy way to record off of their console it would be amazing but like the upload studio and all that though is amazing like i love the you know the themes that they have how you can record straight you know audio into the game and so on and so forth so i'm rambling on but that's what i feel they need to work on and this gpu boost is obviously just something that's being pushed out yeah, by some, some uh, form of Caleb, game. can i only say one thing what i say yes, to kotaku can, all the time mm-hmm. slow news day huh xbox yes <laughs> and that's literally all you have for us yes that's it bro um, anyway, so let's go ahead and get down into some shout outs. Uh, Jeremy, shout outs. Uh, shout outs to you guys. Shout outs to Mark Mir, who dropped by the 16 Bit Assassins podcast. Yes, sir. Uh, and he endorsed. Yeah, what did he say? Uh, I'm Commander Shepard. The 16 Bit Assassins is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. Really? You had him? Uh, he, he was on the podcast? Yeah, dude, yes. he was on the podcast. Wow. Mark oh. Mir, baby. Holy crap. That's we actually, really awesome. I, I, I want to see if I can get him and Jennifer Hale on the show and have an argument between Shepard. The Shepherds. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> so, but uh, so that's my girlfriend who is probably looking at Sims. Yeah. Uh, 
And shout out to Dunny who had uh, Achilles tendon surgery because he blew his. Um, and he's doing better. So, oh. and shout out to all of you asses that got in the Destiny Alpha fuckers. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. John, shout outs. Shout outs to you, go uh, of course, guys, for always having me on the podcast. It's a pleasure. Sure. Uh, shout outs to um, Richard Embry out of uh, Garden Grove, California, who is a comic book artist and just released his first comic book called The Port. You can find him on Facebook. Uh, go ahead and uh, like The Port, P-O-R-T. It's a great graphic comic book. And for a limited time now, you can get the comic book, number one, and a graphic tee of your choice for like $20, which is really awesome considering that uh, the comic book is probably, I don't know, three four dollars and the t-shirt's probably expensive so you know good deal supporting local artists inside the california area he's a good friend of mine when i lived in california so um that and i guess the 16-bit assassin second opinion and of course um shout outs to my youtube page because that's where all my articles will come from now on so anything i write down usually is in my voice and my my delivery but why not just you know, say it instead of writing it down. What am I talking about? When I write down yelling, I might as well just yell and make vlogs. I'm going to be making vlogs for Second Opinion. I'm and they're going to be opinion you. pieces. So I'm excited. And of course, yeah, the the whole uh, going legit and being a uh, full-time streamer starting July 1st. Ready for it, man. I'm ready to Woo! see it. Um, big shout outs to you guys for coming on the show. Shout outs to God like gaming music group for providing the awesome track um you can go and check them out on facebook make sure to like them and share their page give them some love uh shout outs to toaster uh for some reason playing killer instinct um big i <laughs> didn't want to start wolfenstein while we we're doing a show i'm so i would have, I'm gonna have I to stopped listening i would have been like yep <laughs> i'll have to download killer instinct now just so i can fight you in the game Cool. Uh, oh, and, um, hey, for Xbox Gold members on Xbox One, uh, you can pick up pick up Max: The Curse of Brotherhood for free right now. Yeah, I forgot about that. I need to download that. Um, big shout outs to just everybody, all the listeners. Um, shout outs to Charles from the Game Fanatics as well, who is working on our new YouTube intro. Um, I'm about to send out the email to him, and uh, we're gonna have a really awesome looking spiffy intro for our YouTube page coming soon. Uh, and obviously big shout outs to my wife because I love her very much. She's probably in there playing plants versus zombies right now. So, um, this is episode 126 of the second opinion podcast. Make sure to check us out next week. Um, Oh, I almost forgot one last shout out, big shout out to my brother, Matthew. Uh, it was announced, uh, last night officially uh, or today I guess uh, that he is now a teacher for uh, Grapeland ISD he will be an English language teacher for the 6th and 7th grade he will be a defensive line coach for the varsity football and the defensive coordinator for junior high football so I'm extremely proud of my brother for getting that job and uh, you know like I said, just really, really proud of him, dude. I love you very much, bro. And uh, that's it. Big shout-outs to everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to check us out next week. We'll have a couple of guests from around the gaming community to talk about uh, upcoming PAX events and much, much more. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace out. Good night. Thanks for tuning in to the Second Opinion Podcast. This podcast has been brought to you by Second Opinion Productions. Gaming is our passion. Podcasting is our profession. Check us out at secondopinionpod.com and make sure to follow us at Second Opinion Pro.